Hello and welcome to another episode of Kia Electric News. Korean Economic Daily reports that Kia has streamlined its global cell service for EV transition. KED reported on Friday the 8th of March that Kia Corporation has drastically reorganised its global after sales service operations to offer more systematic customer service and manage data as part of its efforts to win over sceptics of the transition to electric vehicles. The organisational reform is also aimed at improving direct communication with its car's owners, increasingly important in the era of software-defined vehicles. According to Kia's annual report released on Friday, Korea's second largest car maker has combined its global operations of after sales service, customer satisfaction service and dealer networks into a separate division, dubbed the Ownership Management Division, the OMD. The units were previously scattered throughout the company. Kia's global business management head, Lee Tai hoon will lead the new division. The Ownership Management Division is also responsible for managing customer data so that it can use the data, including any problems from a maintenance and repair perspective, to develop new models. The division dedicated to its car owners will offer real-time monitoring of in-vehicle software, remote support, driving data analysis and diagnostic services. User manuals are provided on the web and through the app. It will share repair procedures with after-sales employees, including mechanics, through the app. Many thanks to Gary Buck for giving me the heads up on this story. I hope they widen it so we can see the information to repair our own cars. You know, it would be useful. And they definitely need this, a joined up approach. So I welcome this. The Kia EV9 has been named UK Car of the Year 2024. The awards celebrate the best new vehicles available to UK customers today across eight categories. The UK Car of the Year jury is made up of 30 journalists working across the UK on automotive business and tech publications. Eligible cars for the awards must have been launched within the past 12 months. In addition to winning the overall award, the EV9 secured victory in the hard-fought large crossover category. Judges praised the EV9 for several factors, in particular its innate practicality, modern design and long electric driving range. Hyundai Motor's Ionic 5 lineup gets a boost with enhanced features and a new N-Line model. You may have seen my video earlier in the week about the release of details of the mid-cycle refresh of the Ionic 5. I think the facelifted EV6 will end up with most of those features. Highlights were the 84 kWh battery giving 25 to 35 miles extra range, the CCNC infotainment system giving full over-the-air updates and drivetrain updates, and my video from earlier the week is up there. Also on top of this, after the initial press release, Ionic Guy's YouTube channel reported even more new features. A link to his video can also be found in the show notes and again up there. I've summarised the improvements he's found here. There's now a seatbelt cutout in the rear to stop the rattling seatbelt problem, which we also have, get on the EV6 unless you stow them in the little tab or lock them. Charge port light, we've already seen that on the EV6 in this year's model. New suspension, a new red colour for the Ionic 5 N-Line trim for the first time, a redesigned new integrated charging control unit, which was to be expected based on what is in the EV9, and all of that vehicle to home and vehicle to whatever, vehicle to X support. There's, there will be a personalised MyDrive mode, just like in the EV6 GT. Phone is a digital key too, adds Apple support for phones and watches, so you can open and start the car, hopefully with your watch or phone. New heating, ventilation and AC controls with driver-only button. We've had that on, on the Kia EV6 for years. Um, new navigation AR mode, which gives you fancy AR arrows on the main infotainment map screen as you navigate around. Guide rails for tailgate improved to stop the rattle, which they were getting. A new improved feature is the multi-collision auto braking. Uh, active sound design, which we, EV6 has already got, so people either love or hate that. Also a new thing, walk away locking doors at long last. This will have a new 84 kWh battery pack with lower internal resistance. That will hopefully help it charge faster in the winter. Cars Direct reports that in the US, after just several months on the market, Kia is offering $5,000 of the price of the EV9. According to a bulletin sent to dealers, all versions of the 2024 Kia EV9 feature the incentive. 
This represents a big increase in savings, though analysis found that your actual Kia EV9 discount could be quite a bit higher. On March 1st, Kia began offering $5,000 in customer cash on the EV9. Previously, the amount was 3750 making this a 33% increase. With the $5,000 discount, EV9 pricing can potentially fall to just 51395 Having said that, EV9 leases may be more attractive since they take advantage of a $7,500 in lease cash discount. Kia is also now offering a $1,000 EV9 loyalty discount. As a result, shoppers may be in a position to save as much as $6,000 on a new EV9 purchase. But that's not all. We found a hidden EV9 dealer cash discount that could translate to an extra $1,000 in savings. In some cases, that could mean up to $7,000 off the retail price or the MSRP. Is this car security emulator device thieves have been using to take our cars? During the week I came across an article on a website bleepingcomputer.com. It reports that Canada is to ban the Flipper Zero to stop a surge in car thefts. Um, you can see the picture of the Flipper Zero up there. The Canadian government plans to ban the Flipper Zero and similar devices after tagging them as tools thieves can use to steal cars. The Flipper Zero is a portable and programmable penetration testing tool that helps experiment with and debug various hardware and digital devices over multiple, multiple protocols, including RFID, radio, near-field communications, that's NFC, infrared and Bluetooth, so the full spectrum uh, you can examine and look at. Users have been demonstrating Flipper Zero's features in videos shared online since its release showcasing its capacity to conduct replay attacks to unlock cars, open garage doors, activate doorbells and clone various digital keys. While the Canadian government insists that the Flipper Zero is one of the reasons behind the current surge in car thefts in the country, Flipper Devices, the company behind the devices, says the gadget can't be used to steal vehicles built within the last 24 years. Flipper Zero can't be used to hijack any car, specifically the ones produced after the 1990s, since their security systems have rolled in codes, Flipper Devices CEO Alex Culligint told Bleeping Computer. Also, it would require actively blocking the signal from the owner to catch the original signal, which Flipper Zero's hardware is incapable of doing. Flipper Zero is intended for security testing and development, and we have taken necessary precautions to ensure the device can't be used for nefarious purposes. Amazon's also banned the sale of the Flipper Zero since April 2023 for being a card skimming device. So I dug a bit into this. Since the firmware is open source, I wondered if there were custom firmwares being created for the device to improve its nefarious uses. And guess what, I'm not wrong. I found this article on ZDNet. They say in the article, another cool third party firmware that I've been using is Flipper Extreme. This adds a lot of new things to experiment with, such as NFC protocols, an exploit for a Honda keyless entry hack, and also signal jammers. So reading that article and others and watching some videos, it's, it's quite evident this so-called research device can be used for illegal activities with custom firmware. If you Google around a bit, you can also find evidence that the device or two of them can be used to open cars with rolling codes in a roll jam attack. I guess one is used to jam the signal while another is used to capture the unlock codes and then they get replayed later. And because it was blocked when it was communicating, those codes can, can be used because they're, they're not discounted by the car. If you know more about this, please put it in the comments because I'm learning as I go. As far as I can tell, the Flipper Zero device is still legal in the UK. Anyone is free to install new firmware to change its uses and I think they probably are. So. No matter what the CEO of Flipper says, uh, it's been modified and it can do these things. Hyundai US Ionic EV sales increased 40% in February 2024. Inside EVs reports that Hyundai US Ionic EV sales increased by 40% in February 2024. In February, Hyundai sold 2,898 electric cars on its eGMP platform in the US, roughly 40% more than a year ago. eGMP BEVs represent 4.8% of Hyundai's total volume, which is up from 3.6% a year ago. Hyundai Mobis, which is the parts manufacturer um, part of uh, Hyundai Group, applies for 2,500 patents in 2023. Korea Herald reports that Hyundai Mobis said Monday that it applied for 2,500 patents in and out of South Korea last year, with almost half of them related to its core business area of future mobility. According to Hyundai Mobis, about 1,200 patent applications were in future mobility sectors, 
such as automation, autonomous driving, and in-vehicle infotainment systems. Hyundai Mobis has encouraged its employees to invent patentable innovations by giving rewards. The company held the in-house patent awards on Thursday and handed out a total of 100 million won, $75,000 in prizes to individuals and teams. As applying for a patent is not the end, but rather the beginning of the process, the company has continuously seen its patent applications getting approved. According to Hyundai Mobis, its accumulated number of registrations including patents, designs and trademarks reached 9,200 in 2023, up 1,700 from 2022. So they're, they're accelerating what they're doing. Electric reports that Hyundai has launched a special black edition of the Ionic 6 in South Korea. Hyundai revealed the Ionic 6 black edition. It features a blacked out design with 20 inch matte wheels, black front and rear molding and side sills. The addition also includes a black outside mirror cover and front matte emblem. The new model was launched in Korea earlier this week, but Hyundai has yet to confirm if the latest model will make it overseas. Hyundai's new blacked out Ionic 6 is a design specialized package that expresses the sophisticated beauty of black. It can be selected starting from the exclusive plus trim on the Korean website. After EV tax benefits, the Hyundai Ionic 6 standard starts at $37,500, which is 50 million won. The starting price tag for the exclusive plus model is $41,900, which is 55.75 million won. Anyway, that's all for this week. Thank you for watching.